What a girl, what a world, what a life. Oh, I married Joan. What a fine love is fine, what a wife to do. Gee and gay, all day she keeps my heart laughing. Never know where her brain has Jim Backus as Judge Bradley Stevens. I married John. Oh, Joni, where is he? Where is he? <laughs> Where's who? Well, Dr. Salazar. Don't keep him to yourself. Remember, he belongs to the ladies' club. And I wish they had him. <laughs> well, what's the matter? I would like to know who the idiot was that suggested we have Dr. Salazar lecture to the club. And I would like to know what lame brain had the idea that we draw lots to see at whose house he'd stay. Mabel, I happen to be that idiot. And I also happen to be that lame brain. I should have known it. Joan, you don't know what you've done. Now, just a minute, Mabel. You agreed with the rest of the members that it would save a lot of Dr. Salazar's expense fees if one of us would put him up. I know, but... And I don't think you're being a very good sport complaining about it just because you happen to be the one who drew him. Ah, Mrs. Harrison, I've been looking for you. Dr. Salazar, this is Mrs. Stevens. She's a member of our ladies' club. How do you do, Dr. Salazar? I'm delighted to meet you, Mrs. Stevens. <laughs> We're ready to leave for the lecture whenever you are, Dr. Salazar. I thought it was getting close to the time. I like to be prompt. I'll get my hat and coat. Excuse me, please. Excuse me. <laughs> Mabel, he is charming. I almost wish I had drawn him myself. I wish you had. I'm having trouble with Charlie. He's jealous of Dr. Salazar. Oh, no. Oh, yes. He's so jealous he can't think straight. But Dr. Salazar is such a perfect gentleman. <laughs> Charlie doesn't like it. He says any man who kisses a woman's hand in front of her husband can't be trusted when the husband isn't around. <laughs> Joan, could you take Dr. Salazar in your house till he gets through with the lecture series? I'd like to. Oh, but it wouldn't be fair to Brad to bring him home unexpectedly. You mean you're afraid Brad would be jealous? Brad jealous? I should say not. Uh, Brad is much too intelligent for that. He says that jealousy is the sign of an inferior mind. I beg your pardon. Oh, don't be touchy, Mabel. I, I just mean that Brad, well, he's not the least bit jealous. It's just not part of his makeup. What am I going to do about Charlie? Well, I'm ready. Uh, let's get going. Oh, hello, Charlie. Hello, Joan. <laughs> Mabel, did you send my blue suit to the cleaners? Oh, it slipped my mind. I'll do it right now. Don't bother. I'll do it myself. I realize you have other things on your mind. <laughs> Charlie, I forgot. Send me to Devil's Island. Mabel, I want to talk to you. Oh, Charlie, please, later. We've got to go to the lecture. Uh, that's right. Uh, we'd better be going. <laughs> A husband and wife should each daily make sacrifices to ensure the comfort of the other. Now, as a wife, ask yourself the question, am I considerate, attentive, affectionate, never nag, never scold, Never? <laughs> now, if you can answer all these questions correctly, then you are that rarest of all things, a perfect wife. Thank you. <laughs> Joan, what am I going to do about Charlie? And now we come to the uh, question and answer period. Are there any questions? Yes, Dr. Salazar, I, I have a question. Uh, well, you're an authority on marriage and home life. Uh, how do you handle a jealous husband? <laughs> well, what I mean is, uh, Mabel and I are very concerned about a friend who has a problem. Her husband is very jealous. What should this girl do about it? Uh, what should she do? <clears throat> Nothing. She should be very happy that uh, her husband is jealous. What? Oh, yes. A jealous husband is giving a demonstration of his love for her. You see, Mabel, our friend has nothing to worry about. <laughs> now, if he didn't show jealousy, she would have something to worry about. 
Mr. Bird? Oh, yes. Show me a husband who isn't jealous of his wife, and I'll show you a husband who does not love his wife. Well, isn't there such a thing as a husband being too intelligent to be jealous? That is even worse. See, that's even worse. Uh, what did you say? He is taking her for granted. No, for a sound and lasting marriage, I'll take a jealous husband every time. I hope you'll both be very happy. <laughs> tell you how much I enjoyed your lecture, Dr. Salazar. Thank you very much. And now, if you'll excuse me, I, I always take a siesta at this time. <laughs> oh, Joni, I feel so good. Dr. Salazar was right. Charlie needs a stirring up. A woman shouldn't be taken for granted. Oh, Mabel, let's not overdo the cheerfulness, huh? Oh, don't be so touchy, Joan, just because Brad isn't the jealous type. I'm sure it doesn't mean anything in his case. There's always an exception to the rule. Well, I'll have you know that Brad is just as jealous as Charlie. Maybe more. Certainly, dear. <laughs> What's so funny? Oh, I was just thinking how much Charlie must love me. He's just green with jealousy. Oh, Mabel, stop acting so superior. Uh, you think that I'm upset because Brad doesn't get jealous, don't you? But you've always told me that Brad was never jealous. Well, you ought to know better than to believe me. I'm always making stuff up like that. <laughs> I'll show you that Brad does get jealous. I, I tell you, Charlie, it's ridiculous to be jealous. Jealousy is the mark of an inferior mind. But you don't have to put up with that, Dr. Salazar. Hello? Hello, Brad. How are you, dear? Hello, honey. Where are you? I just called home and there's no answer. Oh, uh, I'm at the club Rivoli. Oh, bartender, I'll have another of the same. <laughs> Joan, what on earth are you doing at the club Rivoli? <laughs> Who are you with, dear? Oh, well, Brad, you'll just never believe this. Uh, but do you remember last New Year's Eve when that man kissed me at midnight? Do you remember how jealous you were? Uh, I wasn't jealous. I, I was just irritated. He had no right kissing you. He was a stranger. Well, he's not a stranger anymore. <laughs> just what I ran into him on the street, and he insisted that I come here to the club with him. Are you jealous, dear? Me? Jealous? <laughs> no, of, of course not. I'm glad you're having a good time. Oh. oh, George, stop. Please, George, not while I'm on the phone. Oh, George. Uh, what's he doing? Uh, he's got a straw and he's blowing in my ear. <laughs> George, stop. Well, I'm glad you're having a good time, dear. See you later at home. Bye. You mean you're not jealous? Of course not. If it was me, I'd kill her. <laughs> you don't be so upset. Well, I can't help it, Mabel. In all the years, Brad has never forgotten our anniversary. And on my birthday, he's always been so generous to me. And Brad is so affectionate, and he's so good to me. And now I know why. <laughs> that phony doesn't love me. <laughs> Joni, why don't you explain to Dr. Salazar about you and Brad? Maybe it's a special... Mrs. Harrison, did I get any mail today? Oh, no. Oh, thank you. Oh, Dr. Salazar. Yes? Mrs. Stevens would like to ask you about something. Oh? You uh, have a problem, Mrs. Stevens? Oh, well, no, Dr. Salazar. I don't have a problem. Uh, it's a friend of mine who has a problem. Oh, well, not the same friend that I spoke to about the lecture. Uh, this is another friend. I have lots of friends. Well, if I can be of any assistance, I should be most happy to. Uh, tell me about your friend. What is she like? Well, let's see. Um, uh, she's a mature, personable woman. Sincere, intelligent. Yes, yes, she is. Well, I think I have a clear picture of the lady. Now, tell me about her problem. Well, uh, according to what you said in your lecture, if a husband isn't jealous, he can't possibly love his wife, right? Uh, fundamentally, yes. Uh, well, this girl's husband refuses to show any kind of jealousy at all. But I say maybe he's the type that never does show jealousy. <laughs> Why do you feel so terrible, Mrs. Stevens? 
My friend's husband doesn't love me. She's a very close friend of Mrs. Stevens, and she's all upset about her. Oh, I'm so sorry. Now, if you'll excuse me. <laughs> that always drives Charlie wild. Does he do it to him, too? <laughs> no, silly. When he sees Dr. Salazar kissing my hand. Oh. Mabel. What? Lend him to me. Oh, oh come on. <laughs> look, if he can't make Brad jealous, nobody can. Well, I don't know. Oh, look, honey, you've had all the good out of him already. <laughs> you already know that Charlie loves you. Let me have a turn. I'll only have him over to dinner. Well, ah. how do you do? How do you do? This is a pleasure, Mrs. Stevens. <laughs> I want you to meet my husband, uh, Judge Stevens. I'll take your hat. This is a pleasure. Well, how do you do? Uh, Mrs. Stevens has been telling me all about you. Oh, yes. <laughs> Carlos and I have been having quite a long chat. Haven't we, Carlos? Yes, we have, Mrs. Stevens. <laughs> You don't have to stop calling me Joan just because my husband is here now. Uh, Brad doesn't mind, do you, dear? No, 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 of, of course not. Uh, he has a very superior mind. <laughs> oh, uh, Carlos, uh, wouldn't you like to read the evening paper before dinner? Oh, thank you, Mrs. Jones. Uh, just plain Jones. <laughs> oh, I can't. I want you to have the uh, comfortable chair, Carlos. It's the most comfortable chair in the house, isn't it, dear? Oh, yes, yes, it is. If you're jealous, I'll get rid of him. <laughs> dear, I'm starved. How about dinner? Oh, yes, I'm starved, too. And Joan tells me that she has prepared lobster in heavy cream sauce and chocolate eclairs. Oh, boy, that sounds great. Uh, not for you, Pop. <laughs> uh, you're having a half a grapefruit and black coffee. <laughs> Carlos doesn't have to watch his figure. No, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I saw him playing tennis at the club yesterday, and really, he is built just like an Adonis. You ought to see him in short. I'd like to see him yes? uh, in a match with Randy Morton, our club champion. Oh, well, Carlos would win. He has the most sensational backhand and a great forehand. Oh, incidentally, Carlos, I've been meaning to ask you to show me that forehand stroke. Oh, any time at all, dear lady. <laughs> How about right now? Oh, How about dinner? Later, later. Here, yeah. <laughs> you grip the tennis racket like this. Yeah. Then you draw the arm backward, like that. <laughs> no, no, dear lady, a, a parallel to the ground. Oh. Then you bring it forward in a slow rolling motion. A slow rolling motion. Look, if you two will excuse me, I'll go see what's in the refrigerator. A rolling motion. <laughs> Anything wrong, dear lady? I should say there is. This is the first time anyone ever struck out playing tennis. <laughs> Thank you again, Joan. It was a wonderful day. Well, that's all right. Any time. Is anything wrong, Joan? I've had the feeling all during the evening that you were upset. Well, I might as well tell you the truth. Do you remember that time that I told you about a friend of mine who had a problem? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm the friend. I'm the one who's in trouble. Well, what kind of trouble? My husband isn't jealous. And according to you, he isn't in love with me. Oh, so that's what's been going on. Well, it's a good thing he isn't jealous. It would be disastrous if he were. But you said that... Yes, well, this is a different case. You see, your husband is a very unusual type. The neo-stoic type. Yes. Never said a word to me about it. You, and besides being a neo-stoic, he's also an extremely intelligent man. And with this combination, uh, showing a lack of jealousy is a good sign. You mean maybe he does love me? I'm sure he does. You see, your problem would be if he did show jealousy. Because with the neo-stoic type, uh, they, uh, they have a tendency to keep repressed within themselves. They brood. But then, when the dam bursts, when they break down, then they become dangerous, even homicidal. Homicidal? Murder. Exactly. It follows a definite pattern. They repress, they brood, and then the dam bursts. So be glad that your husband isn't jealous. Oh, Dr. Salazar, that's the best news that I've ever heard. 
Oh, you are so wonderful. And you've made me so happy. Good night, I didn't know that you were here. Obviously. Is it your custom to kiss all our dinner guests goodnight, or is Dr. Salazar someone special? Brad, I do believe you're jealous. Jealous? You're darn right I'm jealous, watching you moon over Dr. Salazar. I've been jealous all evening, but I've kept it within me. <laughs> it's been on my mind every moment. Rudy. But I can't hold it back any longer. Damn his burst. To do something and I know exactly what it is. Murder. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I forgot my hat. Oh, Dr. Salazar, it happened just like you said. What's happened? The, the, the dam has burst. Uh, he's a new neo-stoic, all right. He's jealous. Well, that's very bad, Mrs. Stevens. Uh, but don't worry about it. It will pass in a few hours. It's only a phase. But in the meantime, agree with everything he says. Humor him. Humor him? Oh, yes. It's the only way to keep him from getting violent. Uh, tell me, who is your husband jealous of? You. Me? I think I better go. Oh, don't tell me that you're afraid. Hey, why shouldn't I tell you? I'm brave enough to admit I'm a coward. <laughs> A gun. A gun? A gun? <laughs> Brad, uh, what, what are you doing with the gun? I'm going hunting. Oh, Stop! <laughs> Brad, uh, give me the gun. No, no, me. no, come here. Uh, no, me, no, 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 give me that. Me give, give me that gun. Brad, you're not safe with gun. Give me the gun. Oh, uh, uh, give me the gun, Brad. Give, give no, me no, the gun. No, no, no. <laughs> Brad, then will you please, please put the gun away? All right, I'll, I'll put it in the closet. No, 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 Dr. Salazar is in there, but he just came by to pick up his hat, and believe me, there's nothing between us. I'm trying to make you jealous because you're a neo-stoic. He isn't in there. He isn't? He isn't? Well, of course he isn't. Now, what would Dr. Salazar, why should he be in there? John, 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 are you you feeling all right? No, I'm kind of sick, Brad. Oh, here. Sit right down and relax. There, that's it. That's it. That's it. You wait right there, and I'll be right back. Take it easy. Relax. I'll make you something real nice to drink. Boy, she is upset. Better get her a sedative. Uh, how did you come back in there? Never mind that. Where's he? In the kitchen. That's all I want to know. Goodbye. Uh, tell me what to do. I told you what to do. Keep humoring them until the phase is over. Me, I can leave. Uh, please don't leave me alone. You're not alone, Joan. Your husband is with you. Don't no, put your face. Here you are, Joni. Take this. What is it? Well, come on. It'll do you good. It'll, it'll, it'll help you sleep. For how long? Joan, I insist that you drink this. Now, come on. No, no nonsense. That's better. I'll uh, fix up the sofa for you there. <laughs> Take this. <laughs> oh, that's my good girl. That's much better. Come on, dear, now. Lie down on the sofa. I fix it feel good for you. That's my good girl. Ah. Brad, tell me the truth. What was in that drink? Well, just a sedative. You remember the, the stuff Dr. Fowler prescribed for me last year when I was so nervous? Really? Well, of course, dear. Then you weren't trying to poison me. Poison you? Certainly not. And the gun. You, you really were just going duck hunting? That was all. I had to let off steam somehow. I was so furious about Dr. Salazar. 
Oh, But when I saw that Dr. Salazar wasn't in the closet, I was so ashamed of myself for being jealous. Well, you should be, Dr. Salazar. <laughs> Oh, I'm so sleepy now, Brad. Uh, and I'm awfully cold, dear. Uh, would you get me a blanket? Oh, certainly, dear. <laughs> come on, Dr. Salazar. Come on, come on, Dr. Salazar. Dr. Salazar. must have taken a sedative. Dr. Salazar, wake up. Wake up, rise and shine. Reveille. <laughs> right out, boy. That's Oh, certainly, love. soon? I thought you were going to Dr. Salazar's lecture. Oh, well, it was canceled. Dr. Salazar left town in a hurry. He didn't even stay long enough to kiss anybody's hand goodbye. <laughs> I just hope that it's taught us a lesson, dear, that jealousy is very foolish. You're right, Joan. It's the mark of an inferior mind. Don't rub it in, Joan. <laughs> okay. Hello? Oh, Mabel. What? The girls drew lots to see at whose house the new lecture would stay. And my name was drawn. Now, Joan. <laughs> Dr. Faversham, be here soon. OK, Mabel, thank you. Uh, tough luck, Mabel. Maybe you'll get the next one. Now, look, Joan, I don't want another of those guys hanging around to say nothing of living here. But, Brad, it's only for three days. And besides, it's my duty to the club. But, Joan. Now, none of that silly jealousy. Oh, all right. Dr. Faversham. But he's an Englishman with wonderful manners and a little mustache. We'll probably be having tea and crumpets every afternoon at four. <laughs> that must be him. <laughs> Mrs. Stevens? Yes? I'm Dr. Faversham. Evelyn Faversham. <laughs> a long house, dear. Dr. Faversham. <laughs> do, do come in. <laughs> Thank you. It certainly is nice having you here. Uh, let me uh, show you to your room. Thank you. 